Captain Marvel, and I can't stress this enough, is not a bad movie. Far from it, it's actually pretty good. I mean, for a superhero movie, obviously. It won't do anything you haven't seen before, or even that you haven't seen before in the MCU, and it does have some pacing problems, but it's well made and very well acted. Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson have amazing comedic chemistry and both give very strong performances. Ben Mendelsohn is also fantastic, and the score is uncharacteristically strong for a Marvel movie. Great visual effects, decent enough fight scenes, and great performances more than make up for some plot weaknesses or curious editing choices. There are, however, some problems that are left over. The movie, in places, functions as a recruitment film for the United States Air Force, and that's what was intended. There's also Hollywood's repeated trend of covering primarily people of color with unnatural tones of body paint. And I've touched upon how this being the movie where the romantic subplot is subverted, as it would be with a black man, is suspect. All of those issues could be talked about some more, but I'd like to talk about one thing specifically. The fact that we got a Carol Danvers Captain Marvel movie before we got a Monica Rambeau one. Quick comic book history. Carol Danvers herself did predate Monica by 14 years, and she was Miss Marvel five years before Monica debuted. However, on Monica's debut, she was called Captain Marvel, only the second character to do so, and the first woman. Monica was fantastic. She was powerful, funny, smart, and compassionate, and she even became the leader of the Avengers in Avengers number 279. Though not the first black woman in comics by a long shot, she was the first black female Avenger, and was much more feminist than a lot of her peers, responding to Rhodey calling her Babe with this great line. I'll make you a deal. You call me Captain Marvel instead of Babe, and I'll call you Iron Man instead of Bozo. This isn't to say that Miss Marvel was necessarily a sexist character to begin with. I mean, she did wear an impractical outfit that was designed by a man for male readers, and she did fall in love with her rapist while all the other Avengers cheered her on. But there was some good stuff there, too. But it doesn't matter. She wasn't the first Captain Marvel. Or even the best. But over and over again, we get told to wait patiently while white women get to lead their own stories, even if those characters came after women of color. The prioritization of white women over women of color, and specifically over black women, is no stranger to either the Marvel Cinematic Universe's creative teams or its fandoms. Consider how we are reportedly getting a Shadowcat movie despite Storm being five years older than her. Look at how Marvel happily moved on to characters from the 70s and 80s before eventually making a Black Panther movie. See how characters of color are treated in so many works. Body paint, desexualization, comic relief, whitewashing, villainization. Colorism is not necessarily centered around whiteness, and it also plays a role in this. Notice how Danny Rand is allowed to be with Colleen Wing, who he has never been with in the comics, but not Misty Knight, his canon girlfriend. And fans are just as guilty of this. Every time a show is made about a white woman, you'll get cries of, I know it's not about a woman of color, but this is a step in the right direction. Even though we've been in this direction for a long time, we had a superhero show with a Latina lead decades ago. Look up how fans reacted to Kevin Feige announcing that, make no mistake, this Captain Marvel is about Carol Danvers. Thunderous applause. Their priest has comforted them that they get another white lead. Carol Danvers first. And fans have taken to the media to praise the white screenwriters for possibly, one day, maybe hinting at having a woman of color be the title character of a Marvel movie. But the problem goes beyond that. Make no mistake, it is a definite problem that Marvel saw Carol Danvers fit to lead her own movie and not Monica Rambeau, but it goes deeper. The story of Captain Marvel is also changed around, and I really couldn't care less about Carol's comic story. And some of the changes are for the better, but it's not the changes to her story that bother me. It's the changes to Monica's. Monica Rambeau is a minor character in the Captain Marvel movie, portrayed really well by young actress Akira Akbar. The problem isn't the performance, the problem is the story. In the comics, saying Monica Rambeau is a self-made heroine is an understatement. Her mom was a seamstress and her father was a firefighter. Though these are both noble professions, they don't exactly lend themselves to wealthy college funds or career opportunities. Still, despite facing both sexism and racism working against her, Monica became a lieutenant in the New Orleans Harbor Patrol, even though she was passed over for promotions repeatedly because she was a woman. She received her powers while trying to save lives, and it was the media that dubbed her Captain Marvel. And we can have pretty much none of that in the MCU. 
For starters, Frank Rambo doesn't even seem to be in the picture. Hollywood is obsessed with the single black mother storyline, and MCU is no different. Now, yes, single moms that raise and care for their children are heroes, and fathers that help raise their children are too, and this erasure only serves to reiterate a stereotype about black men. But it also delegitimizes Monica's self-actualization. In the comics, young Monica learned entrepreneurship, hard work, and wisdom from her mother, and bravery, empathy, and joy from her father. She didn't need her mom's work friend to set an example for her. She grew up with two heroes in her family already. Monica was also New Orleans' first superhero, and she became a hero of her own volition, not following in anybody's footsteps. In Captain Marvel, we see that Monica idolizes Carol, and if we do ever get a Monica movie, do you think she's going to come by the Captain Marvel name honestly? The prioritization of white women over women of color is horrible but expected. Agent Carter fans did the same thing, repeatedly asserting that having a white woman lead was a step in the right direction. But with Captain Marvel, there's something more insidious. By both retconning Carol as the first human Captain Marvel, and by making her an important figure in Monica's childhood, Monica's story has been morphed from one about an independent woman that chooses to be a hero to a youth that is inspired by the white savior figure. Making a Carol movie before a Monica movie was racist, no doubt, but Marvel doubled down on this when they made Monica see Carol as her awesome aunt and her inspiration, thus taking the character's agency away from her and instead placing it on the shoulders of their flagship new heroine. This isn't to say that Monica Rambeau can't get her own movie, or even that her own movie won't be good, but she's facing an uphill battle. The most interesting things about her character have been taken away from her, to make the white hero seem cooler in this movie. It's a sad twist that we often see where white characters are made to look heroic by inspiring black youths, and it was one that we really didn't need for Monica Rambeau. Will they ever make a decent Captain Marvel movie with Monica Rambeau as the lead? Perhaps, but I'm not exactly inspired. But that doesn't really matter. Great work is being done with Monica Rambeau in the comics to this day, and you can definitely check it out if you want. Please let me know what you thought of Captain Marvel. This is Moth's Audio and Videos. Have a nice day.